One of my goals for 2023 was to learn Kubernetes, and I failed at it. I made some assumptions, and there were some gaps in my learning plan. And that is why I wanted to create this video to help you if you are planning to learn Kubernetes in 2024. So some of you have watched my 2024 video about the goals that I have, which is a previous video that I just uploaded. You saw that Kubernetes is still on my list to learn in 2024, even though I was doing that in 2023. And trust me when I say this, you cannot master Kubernetes within a year. And I guess you can't even put a time frame when you master Kubernetes. But some of the gaps that I had in my learning plan, I had to fill them first and then move ahead learning Kubernetes. And we'll call them prerequisites that you need. The first one is containerization. Containerization is the foundation of Kubernetes, which means you need to know how containers work. One of the most popular containerization tools is Docker, and you might already know that. But I also found that Docker is the most popular tool in the other tools categories according to the Stack Overflow Yearly Survey. And this is how Docker works. So you create a file called Dockerfile, and you specify the instructions based on which an image is created. And here's an example of containerizing a Flask app. Once you have this file ready, you will use Docker build to build the image based on these instructions. This container image is the blueprint to run your app. And you can find thousands of public images on image repositories like Docker Hub. Now, you can use this image to run your containerized app in a isolated environment, which is the container itself. And you can run multiple of them. And this is where things get tricky. And to help us, that's where Kubernetes comes in. Kubernetes give you the environment to orchestrate and automate the deployment of containers, but also helps you scale, manage, and network these containers together. The second prerequisite is Cloud Basics. Most of the companies that use containers and Kubernetes might be using a managed service from the three popular cloud providers. You have EKS from AWS, you have AKS from Azure, and you have GKE, which is quite popular from GCP. So most probably you'll be dealing with these cloud providers, and that's where I want you to go learn cloud basics. So learn how virtual machines, networking, DNS, load balancers work within these cloud providers. The third prerequisite is YAML. Kubernetes uses YAML files to define the desired state of the cluster. You need to be able to understand and write YAML to configure your Kubernetes deployments. The following is an example of a deployment. It creates a replica set to bring three Nginx pods. The fourth prerequisite is networking basics. Kubernetes involves a lot of networking between the pods, services, and external systems. Having a basic understanding of networking concepts like OSI layers, IP addresses, protocols, ports, and DNS will make learning Kubernetes much easier. So those are the four prerequisites that I think are necessary before you dive into Kubernetes and start learning it. Don't make the same mistake as me of assuming and having gaps in your learning plan. I hope this video helped you. To support this channel, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And also comment down if I should create a Docker course where I explain how Docker works and will containerize one or two apps. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.